House of Representatives. With that, let's get right to it. Adam Laxalt, are you there? We're here, live from Reno. Adam, it's great to see you. You're a good friend. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on. Adam, let's get right to it. You were the Attorney General of Nevada from 2015 to 2019, but before then and outside of you being a double Hoya, just like yours truly, and you know, maybe I wasn't magna cum laude, but you know, I did okay, all right? I, I, had, I had a nice time in college, let's put it that way, and an even better time in law school. Outside of being a fellow double Hoya, you are an American hero. You, you served this country honorably in Iraq. You're a former naval officer, an Iraq veteran. Thank you so much for your service. Thanks so much, Boris. Adam, as a veteran, I've got to go right to the point here and ask you your thoughts on General Milley. The way I read it, and I tweeted this, and I know you've tweeted about this as well, you've been very outspoken. General Milley, by, by back-channeling to China, behind the back of the, of, of the commander-in-chief, going around the chain of command, going to our adversary, our, our most, most significant foreign adversary, to me, that is treason and the attempt to circumvent President Trump's rights to, to utilize, as he chooses, obviously he did not, the nuclear button to be the one that gets to make that decision, that's an attempted coup. Do you agree? What are your thoughts? Well, I ask your listeners to imagine if me as a lieutenant or any service member reached out to China and did something like General Milley did. I can assure you that that service member would be court-martialed, would be absolutely everything available to the military. They would go after that person. And for the media to try to spin that somehow this was to save the republic is absolutely outrageous. We know President Trump didn't start any wars. We know that there was no war budding with China. Uh, We know that his peace through strength worked. And if we couldn't have a better contrast to see the difference in foreign policy between Biden and Trump, uh, I don't know what's going to do it. I can tell you here in Nevada, people are awake. People can see this disaster that's going on with this administration. And you know what they want, Boris? They want accountability. Once and for all, we need accountability from our leaders in Washington that fail us continuously and continuously. Very well put. How do you think... Millie's actions, and, and you are so well positioned to speak on this, uniquely positioned. How do you think Millie's actions impact the veterans? How do they impact those like you who served in Iraq? Those who, like Governor Eric Greitens will be on with us later, who served in Afghanistan. How do these terrible steps that Millie took, both in back channel, channeling to China and going around the chain of command on, on the nuclear football, how do they impact the veterans? There is nothing more important in our military to remain apolitical. And what they have done at the senior brass level by politicizing our military, by going after service members, trolling around the digital media to see if people supported Trump, uh, making their lives miserable, forcing our active duty service members to take vaccines, whether they choose to or not. I mean, we're really going to kick a 22-year-old person that has decided to die for our country or is willing to die for our country out of the military for a personal decision like that, for them to be pushing all of the wokeness on our service members, what do they think this is going to result in? If they continue down this path, no one is going to volunteer for this. If we can't count on our leadership to lead our military, to do the right thing at all times, Who is going to sign up for this and risk their lives? And when you look at Afghanistan, and we know categorically that 13 service members did not need to die, in fact, would not have died for any other reason than the Biden exit plan. General Milley, the Joint Chiefs, the Secretary of State, the plan that they came up with was catastrophic. And service members have to have faith that if they're going to sign up and give, be willing to give their lives, that people are going to have their backs. And right now, our senior brass does not have the back of our military. Very well put. Adam, you're running for the Senate in Nevada. Very important state, very important seat. I know you're a great family man. You've been very successful. You're the attorney general, of, of a very prominent attorney general of Nevada. Why did you decide to run? And tell us how the race is going. 
You know, there is nothing more important right now than us trying to save our country. Uh, I'm hearing it every day. Uh, we are at the crossroads. And I warned, as the chair of the Trump campaign in 2020, we fought all the way to the end for him. And day after day, we kept saying, if Trump loses, the left's advance will be faster and swifter than we can ever imagine. And that fateful day in January when they pulled him off of social media and pulled him off of Twitter, and people felt that in their stomach. Oh my God, they can cancel a former president of the United States. And we're seeing this advance right now. And, and I think the only silver lining is it's gonna take this for people to wake up and understand that the left is playing for keeps. They want to radically right. transform our nation. No doubt about it. Adam Laxall, you were awarded the Joint Service Com Commendation Medal and the Iraq Campaign Medal. You've been a fighter for our country. Now you're going to fight for our country, hopefully in the Senate. We've got about a minute left. How is the race going? Where do you see it? And are you going to be that 51st senator? Look, I have a, a Senator Masto that your listeners probably haven't heard of. And I can Who? tell you what? a lot of Nevadans haven't exactly haven't heard of. Uh, she has done nothing for this state. She is already running, pretending like she's Joe Manchin and some great moderate, but she is not standing for a secure border. She has not stood up against Biden on Afghanistan. She did not vote against critical race theory. As a former attorney general herself, she did not stand against BLM and Antifa when they came to our state and when an officer was shot in the head and is paralyzed for life. And so she is a tool of the left. Uh, our state is ready for a change. They're ready for someone that's actually going to represent them and fight for them. Adam, that is wonderful. That is a key message. Good luck in your race. Keep us updated. Everybody, go follow Adam Laxall on Twitter real quick. Adam, what's your Twitter? Adam Laxall is the Twitter. And uh, AdamLaxall.com is our website. I hope you could support. God bless you, sir. Good luck in the race. We'll be right back.